In this case, we took the, um, the, the, the idea that rather than have people lose weight, we take people who are highly trained athletes already who knew from their personal racing experience what exhaustion felt like. So we, we recruited five lean, healthy bike racers, and this time we fed them basically the diet of Stefansson, 15% protein, over 80% fat. The only carbohydrates they got was actually the glycogen, that is the stored carbohydrate in the, mu in the muscle, in the meat of the animals that we were feeding them. We fed them chicken, tuna, or beef uh, as their entrees. Um, and because we were limited in resources, uh, we only kept them in the metabolic ward for four weeks of the low-carb diet. And we did a baseline, uh, or a performance test at baseline and then at the end of four weeks. And we poked a lot of holes in them to get a lot of samples from them. I won't bore you with all those, those data. Uh, it wasn't an easy study to do for them and we were just absolutely gratified that of the five people we recruited, they all finished out the project. And this is kind of numerically dense data, I apologize. But let me just point out, first, we measured something called VO2 max, which is their peak aerobic power. This is the highest rate at which their bodies could consume oxygen and use it to turn fuel into energy. This, the mark of a highly trained athlete is they have a very high VO2 max. And this number of 5.1 liters at baseline is a very, very uh, respectable, if not excellent number in terms of physical training. Four weeks of no carbohydrates in their diet. Now, they continued to do their training, by the way. The typical training for these guys was 100 to 200 miles a week, so it'd be 150 to 300 kilometers of riding per week. After four weeks of continuing their training and withdrawing virtually all the carbohydrates, they, there was no significant change in their peak aerobic power. Peak aerobic power does not, is not dependent on dietary carbs. Their endurance time to exhaustion went from 100, 147 minutes to 151, so this is four minutes more here, and that is not, not a significant difference. What did change dramatically was this is a measure of the glycogen in their muscle. We actually took a needle and took a piece of muscle out before exercise and it poked the needle in after exercise and took some more muscle out and checked how much glycogen they had. This is the primary source of carbohydrate for these guys, for the muscle during exercise. And they dropped from 143 units to 56 units, which is, they, they, their use was 87 units of glycogen. I won't get into what those units mean, but this is 87 here after four weeks of the low carb diet. First, notice we fed them no carbohydrates for four weeks. They continued riding uh, 200 to 300, 150 to 300 kilometers a week. And yet they still had considerable muscle glycogen. Their glycogen didn't go to zero even though the dietary carbohydrate intra intake was virtually zero. So their bodies had become very uh, skilled at preserving glycogen. And so when they did the final exercise test, they only used 23 units, and they did the same duration and the same intensity. So they were able to cut their rate of glyco muscle glycogen use by more than threefold and, do, and still do the same amount of work. This violates everything that's still written in all the textbooks of physiology, which say the amount of glycogen you use is strictly dependent on how much exercise you, you, you do. And then the other test that we did was we measured the with a face mask, how much oxygen they consumed and how much CO2 they produced. And that we, from that, we calculate something called the respiratory quotient. And from that so-called RQ, you can measure how much of the total body fuel they're using, not just glycogen, is how much is fat and how much is carbohydrate. And 0.83 represents about a 50-50 mixture of carbohydrate and fat. And that's very typical for a highly trained athlete at about 60 to 65% of their peak aerobic power. After four weeks of the low-carb diet, this dropped to 0.72, and that means they're burning over 90% of their calories from fat. And that kind of number had never been seen and never been published in the literature. And we published it, and it sat there. <laughs> and as Professor Noak said, there's this cognitive dissonance that you can have the data in plain sight, but if people don't want to believe it, it's just ignored. 